Today I got a brand new Asus Tough F15 series gaming laptop. I'm going to do some upgrading inside and some cloning. I'm going to show you how I do it. So let's get to it. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a brand new Asus Tough F15 series gaming laptop. I'm going to do some upgrading and some cloning on. Um, the exact model of this computer. It's an Asus Tough F15. The model is FX506LI-BI5N5. It has a 15.6 inch full HD IPS display. Uh, it comes with, of course, an RGB gaming keyboard with accentuated WSAD keys. Um, it has currently has a 10th generation Intel Core i5 10300H quad-core processor, it's four-core, eight threads. Comes with eight gigs of DDR4 uh, memory. It has a 512, or I'm sorry, a five, or 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD plus a one terabyte mechanical hard drive, which by the way are both Western Digital. Uh, has Wi-Fi 6, has the GeForce GTX 1650 Ti graphics, and it has a three cell 48 watt hour battery. It's a nice little gaming laptop, the Tough Series, a little more affordable than like the ROGs, but they, they do perform pretty well. Uh, on this model here, what we have over here is a USB port on this side, no frills. And over on this side, we just got our standard headphone um, audio jack, C-type USB 3.1 to A-type USB HDMI port, and of course an Ethernet port and your power cord. So what I'm gonna do is add some components to this laptop. I'm going to install, instead of the 256 SSD, I'm going to clone that onto a brand new Samsung 970 EVO NVMe SSD, good performing drives. So we're going to add that. Um, I'm also going to take out the 8 gigs of DDR4 that's in there and install some HyperX from Kingston DDR4 memory, two 16 gig modules for a total of 32 gigabytes of, of, of DDR4. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug my cord back in here. <clears throat> and we're going to clone. Now, on the cloning, I get a lot of comments and questions on the cloning um, with these drives. I use Western Digital, Crucial, P5, and P, P2 SSDs, and of course the Samsung SSD, di di different models. There's lots of different ways to clone. In this case, I'm going to use Samsung's data migration software, which is free to download from the website. I'll have a link down below where you can get it. Um, but in this case, for example, this has a Western Digital hard drive and a Western Digital NVMe SSD in it currently. So you could actually use the Western Digital uh, free Acronis True Image software. And of course, you got your other ones like Macrium Reflex 7 works good. I got all three installed on this laptop, but today, like I said, I'm going to use the data migration software from Samsung. It goes pretty quick, and being brand new laptop, there's not any customer data on it, so the customer just wants the larger capacity one terabyte Samsung SSD. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do to start this, I'm going to use this USB enclosure. Now this enclosure here, again, I'll have a link down below where you can get one of these. They're a little more expensive, but I use them in the shop all the time. They're good, they're reliable. There's all different types of these, but this one I like the best. Um, this is only for NVMe PCI Express SSDs. It won't support a SATA M.2 drive. So let me get my new drive out of here. And always try to be careful not to touch the pins on the drive. But these Samsung drives perform really well. I use a lot of them in the store. Just plugs right in, there's no tools, there's a little rubber grom and it snaps over. Or pushes down over just like that to kind of hold it in place. Pretty simple. Now we're gonna use, get back in there. We're gonna use that data migration software because it will recognize their drive in this USB enclosure. There are issues with some of the free Acronis TrueImage. You can't put a, one of their drives in one of these enclosures, it will not recognize it with the free Acronis. Now if you buy, uh, use the paid version of Acronis TrueImage, you can clone any drive any way you want. So in this case, I'm gonna do it just like this. So I'm gonna open up the software here. 
But I'm going to do a video on all the different cloning methods and I get a lot of questions. So when this software opens up, it's asking us to select the source drive. In this case, it's going to be the only one that we can, the 256 gig Western Digital NVMe drive. And our target drive, or um, destination drive is down here. Click here, here's our Samsung 970, one terabyte, good description of it right there. So this is what we got to start. This is what we're gonna end up with. And once I clone it onto the new drive, then I'm gonna open it up, install the new SSD, and hopefully it'll just boot right up. So I'm gonna click on the start button, pretty straightforward. And it's just letting us know that all the data on the drive is gonna be removed if you had stuff on there. So I'm gonna click OK. And we're gonna let it get started down here. It shouldn't take very long. I've done these before, probably just a few minutes actually. But again, if you use like the Macrium Reflex 7, which is totally free, you can clone any drive and use this method here with the USB adapter. But there are, there are other cloning software that you can get as well too. There's the mini tool partition wizard, which used to be free, but now you have to pay for it. So we're already started, we're at two, three percent. So I'm gonna let this go for a minute and I'll come back when it's just about finished. All right, it's just about finished. That whole process so far has taken just about three minutes. It usually hangs a little bit here at 99%, which is normal, it's just kind of wrapping things up. <clears throat> But again, this data migration software from Samsung will only work if you have a Samsung drive in the loop somewhere, either internally or externally. And like the Macrium Reflect, I've done lots of videos on using that. And I do these cloning videos like this. I just want you to see the different ways that you can clone. Um, we have a cloning station here in the shop. And we have cloning bays where we do a lot, lot of cloning every week, but again, I do these videos mainly for demonstration so you can see how to use the different softwares. It's not rocket science, but the key here with this type where you're cloning externally to a USB enclosure is have a good quality enclosure, guys. Now, if there were 30, 40, 50 gigabytes of customer data on here probably take a little bit longer so it's now now it's telling us that we're going to you know shut down the system now so we can do the upgrade so I'm going to choose that in about a little over three minutes for a complete clone that's pretty darn quick so once this shuts off I'm going to flip it over and open it up so I'm going to disconnect my drive and it's nice and warm <laughs> actually I'm going to remove that real quick guys Always, like I said, be careful. If, try not to touch the pins if you can help it. Not the end of the world if you do, but they recommend you don't do that. All right, so now I'm going to flip it over and get it opened up, and we're going to do some upgrading. All right, guys. <clears throat> I didn't want to bore you with taking out all the screws, uh, which I already just removed. I want to point out, though, when you take out the screws on, these, on this particular model, there's like three different lengths. Um, I always like to lay them out on my little magnetic table over here. You can see that there's along the front, you got two short ones in the corners, two longer ones here in the in the center. This is the front of the laptop. And just make sure, and you got basically three different lengths. Put the right screws back in the right holes. You don't want to put a long screw in a short hole. It's going to poke right through the palm rest. And that would look ugly. So anyway, we got the screws out. These actually open up pretty easy. Um, done a lot of these tufts. I'm going to take my plastic triangle spudger tool here, which I'll have a link down below where you can buy a bag of these online, pretty cheap. So all I'm going to do is get into a seam right here along the edge, get it started in there, just like that, and then just gently kind of work it around until it pops. You can, you can see it's lifting up with almost no effort. Don't want to be poking anything long in there because you got speakers and other components you don't want to damage. And always be careful around the port, port areas. It's coming right up, which is what we want. Now, before I actually open it up, I am going to point out something very important. Always protect yourself from static electricity. Use an anti-static wristband, especially if you're in a high static environment. Um, use an anti-static mat or both. 
but just be conscious of that. Uh, all my bench tops and my entire shop and my floors are all anti-static, so I don't need to worry about it. Um, so we'll just finish open this up. But yeah, you just want and you want to use good quality tools. Obviously, you don't. Let me get back over on this side. And this is all scratch proof, so I'm not scratching anything on the computer. But you can see it pretty much opens right up. So we're just going to lift this off. And this is the AC adapter for this model. It's 150 watt, 20 volt AC brick here. It's not too big. Let me get that out of the way for right now, though. So this is what we got. This is our one terabyte, two and a half inch hard drive, which can be replaced with a two and a half inch SATA solid state drive. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, they just want the larger SSD, which is right over here. And we got our memory slots here, and of course our cooling fans, CPU and GPU located here. And I believe the Wi-Fi card is probably integrated right under the board. Oh, I don't know where the Wi-Fi card is. Hmm. Well, it's probably on the board here somewhere, but anyway, uh, stick to the job at hand here. This is our memory slots over here. We've got an empty one here, which we're going to put a 16 gig stick in. Then we got one over here that currently has an 8 gig stick. But before I stop pop, start popping things out of here, if you're a novice and you're doing this at home for the first time and you're never going to do it again, that's, you know, fine. We're going to disconnect our battery. It's a three cell battery. We're going to disconnect it from the motherboard right here. So I'm going to see if it'll slide right back. This connector is going to slide back this way. I'm going to use a plastic tool, not a metal tool, to get in here. And it should come out without too much trouble. You can see, but I'm just not using too much pressure here. Just want to get it out of there. Whoa. They don't give you a lot of slack here, so you got to be careful. You can always remove the battery completely if you want. There's only a couple screws that hold it in. One, two, and I believe there's probably looks like two screws. It's coming out. Ah. There, it's disconnected. I got it disconnected. It's just kind of sitting there. When we're done, we'll remember to reconnect it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this. Oh, actually, before I do that, guys, I'm going to open it up. So let me hear. Pretty important little little step here. After you disconnect your battery, open up the laptop carefully and hold in your power button. Push it a few times. You want to discharge any residual juice that might be flowing through the circuits. There. That's a pretty important little step. I'm going to remove this stick of RAM. All you got to do is gently pull those little metal clips out on the side. And we'll take our stick right out. That's an 8 gig stick. We're going to put in our HyperX RAM here. This board will support 2400, 2666, 3000, 3200, all the above. But in this case, we're putting in DDR4 2400. That's what the customer wanted, so that's what I'm putting in here. Uh, the, the higher megahertz costs a little more, and they just wanted to go with this. It's good RAMs, nice and fast. It'll be in dual channel. Here's our other slot underneath the shield. Kind of a tight fit. Just make sure you get in the slot out of the way. And you just gently push it down, and it snaps right back in. All right. And over here is our NVMe drive that we're going to take out. There's one Phillips screw right here. I'm using a number zero or a pH zero Phillips magnetic tip, which is nice. That way you're not dropping screws on your main board. So I'll set that over, the, over there and try not to lose it like I always do. <laughs> and pull this out. Now this is encased in a little heat shield here. So we're going to slide it out to 2280. It's a Western Digital. It's 512. I'm going to replace it with my Samsung 970 Evo one terabyte. Slide that back in there. And we're going to reconnect it in the slot here. <clears throat> There's our Wi-Fi card. It's underneath the SSD. Hmm. Okay. So anyway, that is upgradable or replaceable. One little screw that holds it in. Oops. I just don't remember seeing the Wi-Fi card under the 
NVMe slot like that. But that's the way they designed it, so it's okay, I guess. All right, so let's make sure it goes in all the way. We do a lot of these SSD upgrades every week here in the shop. And every one is different. <laughs> so we got that mounted. Hopefully we got a good clone so it'll boot right up. We got our RAM sticks back in there. Get this old stuff out of the way. All right, now we're going to reconnect our battery here. Gently, once you reconnect it, just be conscious you're not getting tools and screws and whatnot in there. So it kind of just slides right back into place. All right, we're reconnected. Okay, so now I'm going to put this little guy back on. Now I'm not going to put all the screws back in until I know we're good to go. Save a little time. One time you got to open back up, something went wrong, and I'm going to be taking screws in and out a dozen different times. All right, so I'm going to flip back over. I'm not going to plug in my AC adapter just yet, and hopefully we got a good clone. So let's hit our power button. Now, being a brand new laptop, and sometimes it, by the way, it'll take a minute sometimes when you add new RAM and even an SSD, but mainly the new RAM for it to post for the first time. Don't panic. You just got to be patient because the, the BIOS is reading the RAM. It's making a change, so you just got to be patient. I give it up to a minute. If it doesn't post, I'll just force it off, turn it back on, and usually it's fine. Now we got a post. And we got our little window circle spinning there. It's doing something. And it looks like we got a good clone. Sometimes you don't. When you do these clones through the USB adapters, for whatever reason, you'll get a blue screen. Um, might just have to do it over. But anyway, we got a good clone, so let's go check things out here real quick. Um, let's go to Task Manager. Go to Performance. Go to Memory. Here's our 32 gigs of RAM, 2400 mega, megahertz. We're good to go there. It shows two or four slots. That just means that there's other places on the motherboard allocated for RAM, but there aren't any actual physical slots there. Obviously, you saw we had two physical slots that we put two 16 gig sticks in. So we're good there. 32 gigs of RAM is going to help the frame rate a little bit on the games. And if we just go to, I don't know, File Explorer, I guess. <clears throat> So here's our two drives. We still got our one terabyte mechanical two and a half inch drive, and here's our new Samsung Evo one terabyte SSD. So we got a good clone. Everything went fine. It was pretty pretty simple. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.